after Philip mm. Rivers. And uh, why is Tom Brady so frustrated? He is uh, not happy, uh, Tom, anymore. Mm. And are we ready to crown Luka Doncic yet? Luka. But first, we're going to start with Skip's Cowboys, who are coming off a big win against the Lions, despite only 45 rushing yards from Ezekiel Elliott. Zeke has underwhelmed this year after getting his big payday before the season started. Elliott is not in the top five in rushing touchdowns or rushing yards through the first 11 weeks of the season for the first time in his career. So, Shannon, how do you explain what has happened to Ezekiel Elliott? I still believe that Zeke is a top-tier back. Um, I just uh, believe that teams are saying, basically, Skip, you're going, in order for the Cowboys to reach their ultimate destination, you're going to have to see more of Dak Prescott doing what he's doing because I still believe that teams, you can go back to analytics and, and just like the analytics that all these, the, the pro football folks and everybody else use, these teams have stats and analytic guys also. And the analytics and stats, stats show is that when you neutralize Zeke, that increases your opportunity or your chances to win against the Cowboys. Now, what we've seen is that teams are trying, uh, started to take Zeke away and Dak is playing better. But he's going to have to do that for an extended period of time because since Zeke has gotten into the league, they've been run first. When Zeke run well, they win. And so Dak, you're going to have to see more of what we've seen from Dak against uh, the last team, Detroit, in order for them to be successful moving down the road. Skip, look, when you look at these stats and they say Zeke is 24th, Skip, they, they factor in guys that's getting five because all you have to do is average like six, a little over six carries a game. Zeke, of the guys that are workhorse backs, uh, the Leonard Fournettes, the Christian McCaffrey, the Carlos Hyde, the uh, Chubb, the Zeke Elliott, Skip, he's like ninth. Um, he's like 4.3. Now, unless you're Barry Sanders <laughs> or Jim Brown, 4.3 you laugh at. Those guys are around five. Everybody else that's in the 4.3, that's a damn good rushing average. Skip, you remember he was just slightly over that the year he got suspended and still led the league in uh, uh, yards per game. So that's where he is now. Last year he had six rushing touchdowns. This year he's already at seven. That's pretty good, isn't it, Skip? You like tubs, right? Mm -hmm. You all like no, that. Okay. I, I don't. <laughs> the, the most overrated stat in football, except in fantasy football, is the one yard touchdown. That, right oh, oh. I remember that next time you say when Tom Brady has three of those on his resume you know, and a football game, I remember I, you I said never that. Brag about yeah, you do, those. yeah, you do. Skip, look. Zeke is Zeke is a bell cow back. But he doesn't have, and I think what you've been seduced with, you see Christian McCaffrey, you see Saquon, they bang, bang, bang. Next thing you know, they're off 50, they're off 60 yards. Mm -hmm. Skip, that's really never been Zeke since he's been in the NFL. As I said, his rookie year, he had four runs or catches of 40 yards or more, and then he went one, one. Right now, he's currently at zero. So when you really look at it, I think you keep going back to what he was at Ohio State. I haven't seen that since he's been in the league. Now, I've seen the guy that rushed for 1,600 yards his rookie year and was on pace to probably do that a, a little better his second year, led the league in rushing. But, Skip, it's a big deal now. You just don't lead the league in rushing every single year. Mm -hmm. And I think people are starting to have a false sense that, okay, he led the league in rushing his first two years. He just got a new contract, so just do it again. Eric Dickerson did not lead the league in rushing every single year. Only Jim Brown did. Or seemingly, I think he led it like eight of the nine years that he was in the league. Let's Shannon, he's eighth in yards rushing this year. Eighth. Skip, do you know how many running backs he is? There are 32 teams. Mm. So I'm not concerned. And because, as Jason Gary said, you see they still stacking the line. Mm. The week before, Jerry Jones said everybody and their mama knew mm -hmm. that they were, the Minnesota Vikings were not going to let Zeke Elliott run. Mm -hmm. So that's where you are. And if you're going to win, if your guy, if you Skip Bayless, mm -hmm. if your guy's what you said he is, Zeke should be inconsequential. Mm. Don't even, you don't even need, as a matter of fact, bench Zeke and start Tony Pollard. Mm. That's what you should do if you're so confident Zeke is such trash and washed up like mm. you said. Put Tony Pollard in the game. Mm. So I, I'm going to repeat what your opening remark was. Yes. But I'm going to preface it by reminding everyone Ezekiel Elliott is now by far the highest paid running back in this game. Mm. Ezekiel Elliott just got 50 guaranteed million dollars to sign. You can't take it back. You can't cut it. You can't get rid of it. No. 50 locked in for Ezekiel Elliott. Okay. And you just said, I still think he's a top tier back. Yes, I do. Really? Yeah. Talk about damning with faint praise. No, no, I still believe he's you a top tier back. You know what? I'm going to 
I've been saying this for a month and I'm going to double down right here, right now, because I am not seeing what you're talking about. And just to qualify myself, you're in the Pro Football Hall of Fame, but I learned my football from Bill Walsh and Tom Landry and Jimmy Johnson and even Barry Switzer, who perfected the college wishbone and was as great at, at gearing the running attack as anybody I've ever seen. So I know a little bit about what, what to see and not see mm -hmm. on a football field. And I am not seeing that this is about eight men in the box or defenses geared to stop Ezekiel Elliott. Because I'm going to remind you, Zeke led the league in rushing as a rookie when all they were doing was putting nine men in the box to stop Ezekiel Elliott. Because nobody thought Dak Prescott could throw it a bit when he was a rookie. Right. All he did was win Offensive Rookie of the Year, but maybe it was just because of Zeke. Then in Zeke's second year, he led the whole league in yards per game, right. but he couldn't lead in rushing. He would have, but he got suspended for six games. Right. Then his third year, which was last year, he led the whole league in yards rushing. He dominated this league for three years against defensive coordinators who made Zeke the number one priority. Mm -hmm. Nothing has changed. In fact, I believe that I saw the Detroit Lions, who ranked 26th against the run going into the game, mm -hmm. I saw them backing off. I was trying to count men in the box as best I could from TV, which is always a little hard to do because it flashes here and there. Right. But I, I didn't see that much aid in the box because I saw a Detroit defense just playing straight, just playing coverage because it is clear they have now morphed the Dallas Cowboys into a passing football team. Well, Skip, to your point, if, if you're telling me that the Dallas Cow that teams are going to play Zeke with coverage and not drop that eighth guy in the box, well, then maybe, yeah, it's over. Okay, all right. So something, which I'm about to get to, is very wrong with this Zeke because he looks very different to my eye. And look, I, I hope I'm wrong about this. I can't tell you because week after week I keep saying, okay, this is the bust out game. This is the one where he just bounces back and right. says, I'm still Ezekiel right. Elliott. Mm -hmm. And all I see is that the $50 million man is giving us a lot of, by his standards, 50 cent games. Because those last two games are 50 cent games. Well, you know, Minnesota. What okay. That's 20 for 47 against Minnesota. And we know what happened at the end of the game when I believe Jason Garrett said, put the ball in Zeke's hands. We do. Second and two from the 11. Zeke. Nowhere. Second two, for third and two from the 11. Zeke, minus three. Then throw it to Zeke on fourth down, incomplete. I hope you were right about this, that he's still Ezekiel Elliott. But this is what I'm not seeing from him. I'm not seeing him attack defenses with that rare athletic arrogance he used to have in the first three years in which his body language said, I'm just better than y'all, you know what. You, you know what the word yeah. is, right? Uh, yeah. Right? That's, that's what he said. I, I saw a guy who played with contagious rage that turned into this, th this sort of runaway joy when he kept reaching the end zone in which he jumped in the Salvation Army pot or the whatever you call it. Oh, the, cattle. The, the cattle, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I used to see a guy who would just explode up into the defense with the greatest body lean, just just fierce body lean where he exploded with some burst up into the defense. Okay. Was he an all-time breakaway back? Well, he ran 4-4 at the combine. Right. That's pretty fast. Right. That's fast enough to be a breakaway back. And now I don't see that anymore because you, you look at what 10 or more, he's eight, and in 20-plus yard rushes, he's tied for 32nd. He doesn't break away anymore. No, but it's good. he never broke away since he's been in the NFL. Right. Like I said, you got you got seduced by looking, especially the last four games of, of his sophomore season, okay. where he went to Michigan, Big Ten, Alabama, and Oregon. Yeah. So, but he's not been that since he's been so, in the league. So here's what, and, and again, I'm a psycho Cowboy fan, and I take it way too seriously and sometimes personally but I live and die for these games, and so I'm all over it. I'm just absorbing every little nuance of the game. Okay. So what did I see against the 26th defense against the run, the Lions defense? They ran Zeke on first down 11 times in that game. Yeah. Boy, that's a lot of first down runs that are going nowhere, and I'm like pulling my hair out. I'm pacing my floor because what happened on the first one? It went for one yard and he fumbled. Fumble. Okay. He went 11 times. It averaged three yards a carry, which is not good enough. In the last four runs, when you're trying to kill the clock and keep the ball away from Jeff Driscoll, I'm sorry I'm saying this publicly, but they could not stop Jeff Driscoll. So the last four runs to Zeke, they try to feed the beast, eat Zeke, eat, kill the clock. 
They go for two yards, two yards, one yard, and zero yards. And if we could see the very last seat carry, because this is the one where you're backed up, First and 10 at your 13, and they give it to Zeke to kill the clock, and that's a zero-yard game. Yeah, look at his offensive lineman. Okay. Look at the well, line of scrimmage. Okay. Well, help me but, out. But that's so what, that came. Th but, then the next play, they play action to Blake Jarwin, who I call Shannon Jarwin, that's and he gets 23 yards, and it kills the clock. Uh, uh, and guess okay. why he got that? Because they were so hell-bent on okay. stopping Zeke Elliott. Okay. okay, what was I saying in my little living room? I'm saying feed the beast. I wanted to see him go three straight carries for a first down. And the clock runs and runs because there's 154 left when right. they started the series. Right. Okay. So what, I, I couldn't even see him run to kill the clock. Okay. So now we're down to what, what's wrong here? What's happening? Is it the offensive line? Have they just turned into a pretty good pass blocking line, but a bad run blocking line? Well, Are you going to, you want to?